Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Graphing Lines in Four Quadrants Using Input-Output Tables, Part 1. So here in the last couple of se uh, sections, the last several lessons, we've learned how to graph lines. But all of those graphing exercises were really only done in the first quadrant. And what I mean by that is when you have the coordinate plane right here, you have quadrants. Here's a quadrant, here's a quadrant, here's a quadrant, and so on. And in the past, all of the lines, we were just graphing them only in the first quadrant because the x values are positive and the y values are positive. Notice this is the x-axis, and of course this is the y-axis up this direction. All right, so we were keeping it simple by keeping the x and y values positive. The only difference that we're doing in this lesson is we're graphing the line as it extends over all four quadrants. Because, it, as you know, as if a line goes in the first quadrant and passes through here, then of course it's going to extend on into the opposite quadrant and so on. So we just want to graph the lines in this lesson as they extend over all four quadrants. But the actual mechanics of what we're doing is exactly the same, it's just more practice. Here we have negative numbers to deal with more often. So the first equation of a line we have is y is equal to x minus 4. Now you know right away that this has to form a line because we've already learned that all lines are uh, falling into the category of y equals m times x plus b. We've already learned this before, so we have y is equal to the number 1, m, x, plus b, but the, the minus sign, we'll see how it works out in a minute, but plus a minus sign, it's still plus a negative 4. So it is still y equals m, x, plus b. So I want you to, as we have learned in the last lesson, I want you to think of this process like a machine. Later on, we're going to call this machine a function. But right now, we're just going to call it a machine, and it takes as inputs x values. Now, I can put anything I want in for x, and on the inside of this, for our first problem, y is equal to x minus 4 is the calculational thing happening. You can think of little gerbils, you know, spinning on a wheel in there, calculating things, or a computer or something, and then on the output comes the y values, right? So the inputs come in on the left, and the outputs come on the right. And what's happening in here is you're just taking whatever the input is, you're subtracting 4, whatever you get is assigned to the label that we call y, and then out comes the y values. That's what's happening. So that's what we call an input-output table. The inputs are the x values, which I've listed here, and we're going to calculate the corresponding outputs. Now for the inputs, I've chosen the inputs I want to use. And the reason I've chosen those is because it makes it uh, oftentimes choosing certain numbers make it a little easier to calculate. But just keep in mind that you're free to choose any numbers you want for x, even decimals or fractions. Any number can go in to the input side uh, over here. I'm just choosing these because it'll make it a little easier to calculate. Let's see how that works. If x is equal to negative 6 and I put negative 6 into the value of x, I'll just write it over here then I'll have negative 6 minus 4. That's what I'm going to have. If I put negative 6 here minus 4, what will I get? I will get negative 10. So when I put negative 6 in, I get negative 10 out. So the output I'm going to write here is negative 10. So here forms a pair of numbers, an xy pair, negative 6 comma negative 10, and we're going to plot these points and draw the line in just a minute. Now, if instead of this, x is allowed to be equal to negative 2, then it'll be negative 2 minus 4, because I'm subtracting 4 away, and this is equal to negative 6. And so negative 6 is this corresponding value right here. Let me just double check my work, always double checking my work uh, here. And so this point will be negative 2 comma negative 6. If instead you allow x to be 0, then 0 minus 4, uh, what are you going to get? You'll get negative 4. And so negative 4 will be the corresponding value here. And the point that we're going to plot will be 0 comma negative 4. All right, lastly, or almost next to last, if you allow x to equal to the number 4, then you'll have 4 minus 4, which we all know is 0. So 0 goes here, and the corresponding point is 4 comma 0. And then finally, the last uh, value we have in the table is 9. So if we have 9 minus 4, we're going to get 5. And that means 5 goes in this column, and then the point is 9 comma 5. So let me double check my points. Negative 6, negative 10, negative 2, negative 6, 0, negative 4, 4, 0, and 9 comma 5. Now here are the points. Now we suspect strongly that these points, when we connect them, should form a line. Why? Because the original equation we have is y is equal to x plus 4, and we know that all lines follow the form mx plus b. 
right? You might say, well, this doesn't look quite the same. There's a plus sign, there's a minus sign here. Well, let's come back to that in just a second, but just notice that I, I'm going to show you after we draw the line that, that it actually is in exactly the same form as this here. So let's go ahead and plot the points and connect the dots. So negative six comma negative 10. X is negative six, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, and then negative 10 is all the way down here because here's negative 10 right here. So negative six comma negative 10 is a point that is formed right there. All right, next point, negative two comma negative six. X is negative two, and then negative six is right here. So you go negative two and then down to negative six right there. Next point, zero comma negative four, zero for X, and then uh, negative four for Y, has gotta be right here, right on the axis right there. And then we have four comma zero, X is four, and then y is zero means it's on the axis right here. And then finally nine comma five, which means x is nine, and then we go up to five, which means we're right here. So there's our final point. Now hopefully, if we've done everything correctly, and I'm probably gonna accidentally erase this, these markers as I hold this thing over, so I'll try not to mess it up, but you know, it's probably gonna happen. You can see I've already erased a little bit there. So let's draw a line through these points. And of course my line I extended a little bit on the other side because this forms a line. This line goes on forever in both directions. This equation of a line, it goes on and on forever. We have just chosen you know, a few points to put in here. And notice that in this particular case, it didn't really matter which points I picked because when I put a number in here, it's pretty easy to subtract. But sometimes when there are fractions or other things going on, you'll know that some numbers are gonna be easier to put in and calculate than others. But notice that it forms a beautiful straight line. And we suspected that's the case because we know that this is the equation of a line. And again, you might say, well, wait a minute, these are different. But if you look at the original equation, y is equal to x minus four, you can write this as x plus a negative four. Because remember, any, any uh, subtraction can be written as the same thing as this. And if you consider that any variable has the number one as an invisible coefficient in front of it, then what do we have? These two things, are exactly the same, of the same form is what I'm trying to say. Y equals sum slope m times x plus b, sum slope times x plus b. So we have learned in previous lessons that when you can put it into this form, the slope is whatever's in front of x, which is the slope of one, and the y-intercept is negative four. And we've already learned in the past that the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. Notice the line does cross the, the y-axis right here at an intercept of y is equal to negative four. And the slope is one. When you have a slope of one, that's the same as one over one, right? Rise over run, a one over one. So if we start at the intercept and go up one over one, we go to the next point, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. And my line is not perfect, but you can see that when you start at any point on the line and go up one to rise over and a run of number one, rise over run, one and one, then you end up stair-stepping across that line. So the line that we drew with the input-output table uh, comes from calculating values and plotting points, but it also agrees with what we know how lines should behave. Namely, that every line is going to be able to be written in this form. You can extract the slope out of it and you can extract the y-intercept out of it and then we can see that these things agree. All right, let's move on to problem number two. And we can see that in problem number two, it's a little bit more complicated because we have negative two times x plus five, all right? But we can see that it's a line, right? Because y is equal to m x plus b. So you can immediately read the slope as negative two and the y-intercept is five right off. But in terms of input output table, if we allow x to be negative two, then what we will have is negative two times negative two plus five, right? Now what's gonna happen is this can, is gonna be four. So this is gonna be four plus five. And four plus five is nine. So I'll just put the nine right there. So you get two comma nine right here. What if you put a negative one in here? You'll have a negative two times negative one plus five. But negative times negative is positive two, and you still have the plus five, that's gonna equal seven. What if you allow x to be one? You'll have negative two times one plus five. This will be negative two, and then you have plus five, but when you add these, you'll get a three, right? What if you allow x to be three? You'll have negative two times three 
plus 5. This will be a negative 6 plus 5. And when you add these, you will get negative 1. If x is allowed to be the number 5, you'll have negative 2 times 5 plus 5. This will be negative 10 plus 5. And then you'll add these, you'll get negative 5. And then the last one in our table here is 7. If you allow it to be 7, negative 2 times 7 plus 5 you'll get negative 14 plus five. And when you add these together, you'll get negative nine. So now we have our table laid out here. So let's go ahead and plot these points and see what happens. Negative two for x comma nine for y. So this is an ordered pair, x comma y, negative two comma nine. So negative two to the left comma all the way up to nine goes up here, right? Next, negative one comma seven, negative one comma, here's five, then six, then seven, the next point in, in the line is right there. One comma three is one comma one, two, three, which is right there. Three comma negative one is three for x, negative one for y, which means it's down here. Uh, we've done this one. Next, five comma negative five, here's five for x, and negative five is right there for y. And then seven comma negative nine, Here's seven, and then we go all the way down to negative nine, which is right here. And you can see these are gonna form a line as well. Let's draw that line and see what it looks like. Again, I'll probably accidentally erase some of these points just by putting the straight edge on top. I will try to keep them ah, somewhat intact. It's not so easy sometimes, but you get the idea. You can see a line goes through there. Now again, remember the line goes on beyond these points and put a little arrow heads there because it goes on beyond the points that we've chosen to plot. But you can see it forms a perfect straight line. Now let's take a look at the original equation. The original equation is y is equal to negative two times x plus five. And we already said many times that all lines are in the form m x plus b. So you can see from comparison, the slope is negative two and the y intercept here is five. Right, and the y-intercept, we can just check immediately, this line does go through a y-value on the axis of five. So there's the y-intercept right there. And the slope being negative two, it's easier to think of it in a fraction, negative two over one. That means you rise down of two and you go over run to the right of one. So starting from, let's say from here, any point you want, it's fine, let's start from here. We go down two, one, two, and then over one. There, we're back on the line. Down two, over one, we're back on the line. Down two over one, down two, over one, you see? And we can immediately see that the slope of this line sh is negative, which means it should slant in the negative sense, which is exactly what it's doing. The slope of this, because there's an invisible positive one here, the slope is positive, which means we know from looking at this, the line should slope positively, and that's exactly what it does. All right, let's work our third and final problem for this lesson on the next page here, on the next graph. And what do we have here? Y is equal to one half X plus three. We can see it's a line because it's MX plus B. And we're just gonna plug various values in. Let's put negative eight in here. We're gonna have one half, uh, negative eight plus three. Now what is ha one half of negative eight? That's gonna be negative four. But when you add this, you'll get a negative one. So negative one goes in the output column. All right, what if we put a negative two in here? We'll have one half, negative two, plus three. Well, what is one half of negative two? That's negative one plus three. And when you add these together, you'll get a positive two. Now you can see why I'm choosing these numbers, right? Because it makes it easier to calculate when I'm doing a fraction, one half of eight or one half of two, it's easy. But if I put, you know, three in here, it would be one half of three. And then I would have a fraction and I would have a, a lot of fractions running around. So if you're just trying to draw the line, pick numbers that are easy to calculate. And what about the number zero? Be one half of zero plus three, and that's just gonna give you three because the zero, of course, goes away. And so we have a three here. And then we have one half of four plus three. One half of four is two plus three, which is five. And then we're gonna put a 10 here, one half of 10 uh, plus three, which means five plus three, which is eight. Let me double check my numbers. Negative one, two, three, five, eight. There we go. So now what happens? We want to plot these num these points, right? Negative eight comma negative one. Here's negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, comma negative one means you go down. There's the first point. 
negative two comma positive two. Negative two to the left, positive two up means there is the second point. Zero comma three means zero comma one, two, three. Third point is right here. You can see it nicely forming a line. Four comma five is four comma one, two, three, four, five, which means the point is here. And then 10 comma eight, 10 comma, here's five, then six, then seven, then eight right here. And if we've done our job right, then this should form a nice line. Let's see if it does. So we'll go through these points and we'll draw a line that goes through. And we'll put a little arrowhead just to remind yourself that, hey, this doesn't stop here. It go, this goes on and on forever. So this forms a line. And of course, we want to double check ourselves. So let's go back up to the equation. What would be the slope of this line just by looking at it? Mx plus b. The slope should be 1 half and the y-intercept should be three. So we go down here, we can see the y-intercept is at one, two, three, exactly as we predict. And if the slope is one half, that means we go up one and then over two, up one, over two, up one, over two, up one, over two. The slope is one half, up one, over two, up one, over two. And so it checks out. And of course, it's slanted in the positive slope way because we do have a positive slope there. So in this lesson, we're basically doing what we've done before, so it does go a little faster. So we don't have to talk about everything, and introducing it all over again. But because we're using all four quadrants, you notice sometimes the y-intercept is down here in, in a negative way. And so sometimes the lines go and we have to, to, to put points in and calculate numbers that are negative and then plot points that are negative. And then we have to understand you know, negative y-intercept and negative slope. But don't forget the big picture that these equations, later on we're gonna call them functions. I'm, I'm leading into that with you here because soon we'll be calling them functions. They are called functions later because a function is something that kind of does a job. If you think about the, what does the word function mean? Function, it means what is your function? It means what is your purpose? What is your job? What is your task? That's what a function kind of in, like if a, if a, if a, if a computer has a function, that means it does a job, right? So these things are going to be called functions as well. And the reason is because they perform a job. They take numbers on the input, they calculate something, that's their function. And then they pump out output numbers. And then these numbers form a pair of points, which we can then plot and we can see how that Later on, we'll call them functions, how those functions are behaving. Right now, we're just calling them lines, but I am introducing it to you because we are gonna call them functions very soon. So I want you to keep this mental picture. I want you to practice these. And then follow me on to part two, we'll get a little more practice with graphing these equations of a line in all four quadrants.